Have you ever wondered why a tornado, so rare and powerful that it vaporizes entire neighborhoods, suddenly vanished? Like a magic trick nobody can explain, leaving scientists baffled and storm chasers frustrated. And if you're thinking, wait, wasn't that Iowa tornado last year an EF5? Nope. Not a single one since 2013 when winds over 300 kph tore through Moore, Oklahoma, like a fighter jet at full throttle, leaving a scar on the land and the record books with nearly 2 billion in damages. Homes ripped from their foundations, entire neighborhoods turned to rubble and grave destruction. But here's the thing. No tornado has been labeled an EF5. 12 years. Thousands of tornadoes. But no sign of EF5s. Why? Is it that Mother Nature has suddenly backed off? Or is something terrifyingly wrong with how we measure disaster? Imagine a world where tornadoes still unleash unimaginable fury, yet are never labeled the absolute worst. Today, we uncover the mystery behind the EF5 drought and why experts claim we may never see another EF5 tornado as we once knew them. EF5 tornadoes aren't just rare, they're gone. Today, we're diving into a conspiracy of science, climate chaos, and a rating system that might be hiding the truth. The real question is, could climate change be silencing these monsters, or is the real threat to us? Tornadoes form when warm, moist air collides with cool, dry air, creating instability, and extreme wind shear causes rotation. While climate change is likely to increase the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events, including tornadoes, the exact impact on tornado strength, especially EF5s, remains uncertain due to the complexity of atmospheric processes and the limitations of current climate models. But here's the twist. Climate models predict more tornadoes in the southeast U.S., where forests and swamps hide the damage. No damage equals no EF5 rating. So, if a 300 mile per hour tornado hits a soybean field, it's labeled EF2. It may be hard to believe that with an average of 1,200 tornadoes each year in the United States, we haven't seen an EF5 rated twister in more than 11 years. However, that doesn't mean the number of tornadoes is decreasing. It's quite the opposite. In 2024, the U.S. had over 1,800 confirmed tornadoes, the second most on record. Although the U.S. has not experienced an officially classified EF5 tornado in over a decade, this does not necessarily mean that extreme tornadoes are becoming less frequent. The reality is that our standards for measuring them have simply changed. For decades, our understanding of tornado intensity was anchored to the legendary Fujita scale, Developed in the early 1970s by Ted Fujita, he gave us a way to estimate how ferocious a tornado was by looking at the damage it caused. An F5 tornado on that scale meant buildings were reduced to complete rubble, witnessing winds that might have topped 318 miles per hour. In the world of tornado measurement, the rating isn't a direct reading of wind speed. It's damage-based. Survey teams rush out after a storm and survey the scene with a checklist of indicators. They gauge the impact on building materials, foundations, trees, and other structures. If a structure is built to code with anchor bolts and reinforced concrete, a tornado packing winds over 200 miles per hour might only cause damage consistent with an EF4 level. As the building was constructed with modern improvements, the damage doesn't reach that complete wipeout threshold, and the conditions we once associated with EF5 damage now fall just shy of that rating. Then, in 2007, the enhanced Fujita EF scale was developed as a new measuring system. As scientists believed, there were concerns about the lack of consideration for the integrity of structures with the original Fujita scale. Fujita even agreed that structural integrity should be considered when assigning the rating. The new system refined those wind speed estimates by meticulously linking them to 28 specific damage indicators, ranging from the construction of houses to the mechanism by which trees are uprooted.
But here's the kicker. The scale relies on what's left behind. No damage, no EF5, even if the winds were strong enough. Let's step back and consider the human factor. Back in the 90s and early 20s, many homes in tornado-prone regions were built with minimal reinforcement. When an F5 tornado came through, the destruction was immeasurable. These changes, while undoubtedly saving lives and reducing casualties, create a measurement challenge. The most destructive damage no longer occurs because the structures are simply too resilient. And so, even a tornado with wind speeds that might exceed the old thresholds leaves behind a signature that falls within the EF4 range. Just think about having advanced mobile radar systems that can directly measure wind speeds at ground level rather than inferring intensity from damage. Let's fast forward for a moment. Picture a future where experts adjust the EF5 threshold downward from 201 miles per hour to around 190 miles per hour, a change advocated by some researchers to better match the original Fujita scale's intent. With that tweak, several high-end EF4 tornadoes would suddenly be upgraded to EF5 status, and our historical record of violent tornadoes would look very different. It would be a radical shift in our understanding, and could even influence building codes, insurance practices, and emergency planning going forward. Here's the key moment, the climax of our discussion. In a recent paper to the American Meteorological Society, researchers not only documented the historical gap in EF5 ratings, but also explained how a simple technical adjustment in the damage indicators might resolve the drought. This isn't just academic debate. It has real-world implications for how we prepare for, forecast, and respond to tornado events. What's more, these findings challenge the public perception that the worst tornadoes are a relic of the past. Instead, they reveal that our measurement system might be masking nature's true fury. Before we wrap up, consider this. The enhanced Fujita scale saved lives by pushing better construction but it also erased the monsters we fear, meaning we're either lucky or the system's broken. Let's connect the dots. EF5S aren't extinct. They're evolving, slipping through the cracks of better buildings, stricter ratings, and climate chaos. The next big one could hit tomorrow, or it might never show up on paper. The key takeaway isn't to be lulled into a false sense of security by the absence of an EF5 label. The atmosphere remains just as volatile and dangerous as ever.